Sorry about that, man. Uh, hey, listen, I got you. Listen, you little bitch. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. Uh huh. Have a good one. Bye. Say goodbye to Tina Turner, folks, because she basically drops out of the game at this point. It's just a shame, too. We never got to find out who she is or what she does or why she's growing tinfoil out of the top of her head. Ah, yeah, well, I'm just happy to see Tina got more acting work beyond Thunderdome. Boom! I did it again, baby! I am the greatest comedian who ever lived! Yes! 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 Eventually you find the haunted laptop again and go back into the game world, which is basically just the evil version of the building you're currently in, only with six times the number of bathrooms. It's weird, it's like every room here is a bathroom, and of course you have to go inside every one because there's plot critical items along with guns and ammo. Because where else do you keep your bullets but the toilet? That's most of the game, really, just running between bathrooms looking for items and killing all the monsters hiding in the toilet stalls. Because of course there's a monster hiding in the bathroom stall, right? It's kind of sad how obvious a setup that is in a horror game. But it doesn't just happen one time, it happens in like every single bathroom where you kick down the door and there's a monster inside wiping his ass. After a while I kind of started to sympathize with the monsters. I mean, let's say you're the monster, you're sitting in there trying to take a shit and all of a sudden some dumb bitch flings the door open waving a shot shotgun around. You fucking freak out, man! Who does that? Who's the real monster here, I ask you? It's real nice of the camera to stay fixed right on the fucking door instead of letting me see what's in the room. So the only way I can see the monsters who want to rip my goddamn face off is to run directly into them. I also like how Meg, this computer jockey who weighs 95 pounds tops, is now just casually blowing monsters away, firing a pump-action shotgun from the hip. She's not even stressed out that she's battling the legions of hell. If anything, she seems bored. And I just, I can't see anything. I know survival horror games basically have to be dark, but come on! Combined with the shitty camera angles, most of the time you're shooting at targets off-camera in pitch blackness. This shit is darker than the Cinema Snobs old reviews. Now, the game gives you a flashlight right away, and what a flashlight it fucking is. It only lights up, at best, like two feet around you. My cell phone puts out more light than this fucking thing. Maybe it would show more if you could point it anywhere but straight down at your fucking feet. So I have this idea, right? Maybe I could see more if I switch to first person view and see where the light is shining. Oh, beautiful, fucking fantastic. I'm so glad I have this fucking thing. Plus, you have to keep shoving batteries into it, because as we all know, flashlight batteries in the real world only last four, maybe five minutes. You know what really doesn't help when you're walking around a building with no lights on and pitch blackness carrying a flashlight that doesn't fucking work? Wearing sunglasses! I kind of like to show how you shyly placed your eyes on me. And look at this! Or rather, look at nothing. They actually included a dialogue scene where I'm talking to someone I can't see, complete with close-ups of the guy I can't see. Brilliant. He even sends you out to repair the generator to fix the lights. So you go off to kill the monster that carries the generator key and- <laughs> That was the only sound effect you guys had, wasn't it? You know, I've always loved how in most survival horror games, in the middle of getting torn apart by zombies or demons or whatever the fuck this is, you can just hit the inventory button at any time to immediately freeze the space-time continuum and just do anything you want. You can mix herbs, change your readied weapon, eat your healing jelly, do your taxes, and of course, reload your guns. And the reload happens instantaneously, right? In fact, I've seen several games that flat out tell you to reload in the menu because it saves you reloading time if you run dry in the middle of combat. What godlike powers permit you to fully reload a shotgun in the space between nanoseconds of real time? I don't know, it's just always been funny to me. This is the monkey with the key? That's supposed to be a monkey? That's one chunky fucking monkey. And what does a demon monkey need with a key to the generator room? Why would it have that when it's not wearing any clothes? Where'd it keep the thing up its ass? Ugh, whatever, let's just fix the generator. The power in the lab has been restored. Oh yeah, I can tell this made a big fucking difference. Time well spent. Fuck this game. Oh good, another bathroom. Oh my god, there is a monster inside this bathroom. Ah, 
Then there's the other bathroom right across the hall with another monster inside the toilet stall. Is this all the designers could come up with? You know, the moral of Jaws was don't go in the water, and the moral of the ring is don't go in the bathroom. Is the ring meant to be the shit scum ring on the toilet? Back in the real world, you learn that the chief has somehow stolen Sadako's body, autopsied it, and developed a virus that he plans to use to wipe out the entire world because... Because no reason. He's evil. What do you want? One wonders why he's even going to all this trouble when A. Sadako would probably help you destroy all life on Earth if you just asked her, and B. You already have the death video. We've already figured out how to kill everyone on Earth with a video, haven't we? Just put it on TV like this. If it goes out, it means the death of millions of people, everyone watching. Don't you understand that? No virus has ever been this powerful. You can't make fun of magic in Asia. <laughs> Asian magic is so lame. Hey, I got a joke about it. Name a famous Asian magician. Trick question, because they don't exist. <laughs> hey, Asia, Chris Angel called. Actually, no, he didn't, because your magic is so stupid. Sick burn! The chief has Sadako's body in a secret underground lab full of patients he's been testing the virus on. A side effect of the virus is that it makes everyone cast shadows that look like the Grimace. A bunch of them are kept in the breeding room. I would not want to go into a place marked breeding room, but that's just me. You start talking to the patients, who are all crazy, when suddenly they collapse, screaming in pain. And before you know it, way before you know it, BAM! They've turned into monsters! Come on, lame! This is such a cop-out! You can't do that! You can't change a man into a slavering monkey monster between edits instantaneously. It's just cheating! What One more second, because I'm beating the shit out of you, bro. I gotta, really gotta heal up. Good thing I brought my healing jelly. Oh, that's good. Oh, that feels so much better. Okay, bro. Time in! Gosh! Back in the ring world, Meg meets up with a brigade member we can't see again. Who is this guy, and why is he in the computer world? Why does Meg just blindly follow this douchebag's orders, and why does he not do anything to help? Yeah, I'd go with you, but I just woke up. I'm no good before I have some coffee. He tells you that to open one of the doors around here, you need a grenade launcher. And it just so happens you can find grenades for the launcher in the refrigerator in the fucking kitchen. Huh. Yeah, I guess that is a smarter place to put them. I've been keeping mine in the stove. Should probably move them. Of course, you also get an assault rifle to round out the armory. <laughs> wow. Doesn't that just sound like a high caliber rifle? You found napalm bombs! Oh, this is good. Yeah, I like this. Uh, Meg with incendiary chemical bombs. I got a good feeling about this one. Eventually, you run into Sadako's mother down here. I think. Kind of. Shut up, I can't tell. I mean, I guess I was thrown by the fact this girl is obviously like eight years old. I mean, this game is so poorly translated, who the fuck knows, right? She says something about like magic powers and destiny and reincarnation and the fact that this is the Matrix so anything is possible. I, it's just impossible to make any kind of sense of this bullshit. Well, whoever it is tells you that the Chief has a vaccine for the virus, which Meg needs to get from Sadako's body. 
But then, she reveals the horrifying and incredible secret of Terra's realm. The world that you believe is real is a virtual world that humans made Sadako create. And the real world is really the virtual world. And the virtual world is the real one. Oh my god, Sadako is the Matrix. Ah, oh, my mind is blown. She created a mundane, ordinary existence where I'm a shiftless moron with no ambitions. Why would anyone do that to destroy the world? It doesn't make it- The world inside them shapes itself around the darkest feelings and every person sent into it through the black game. We can hurt rage and pain in order to recharge the- What a- I just wonder if fucking trapper keepers exist in the real world because, you know, things are so much more practical there. I'm so sure in the real world, everyone wears really uncomfortable fetish outfits and welding goggles in the dark. You go into the room that contains the computer that creates the real world, which is actually the Matrix world, which is being powered by Sadako's brain. Her two brains. Or is that someone else's brain? Whose? I don't know. Anyway, Meg accesses the computer and finds another FMV sequence from the movie. A very, very boring FMV that has nothing to do with anything. Mm, here's your dalad jelly, Mum. Experimentation? Oh, you fool. Someone just brought her some coffee. The ring, Terra's realm! Welcome to E3, gentlemen. First up, Square Enix has announced not one, but two sequels to Final Fantasy XIII. And in the first-person shooter category, we have remakes of both Syndicate and XCOM. What? This is outrageous! How the hell do you make a tactical team game into a shooter? A betrayal, I tell you! Make a real Syndicate game! Oh, jeez, yeah. Been there. I had that face when I saw Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I think the whole point of that scene was to reveal that people were experimenting on Sadako, even though I don't see how this looks anything like any sort of medical experimentation. And besides, Meg already knew that, and yet she's still shocked by the news. You can't make fun of magic in Asia. Anyway, after watching that, you go back to the real... fake... simu... whatever world to get the vaccine from the Chief. And... I don't even... is the Chief real? How did he get Sadako's Matrix bot? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. I don't know why you and Robert want to have it your own way. It's almost like you don't want to be horribly mutated and sent to hell by a virus. Chief? Now that's impossible! The guy we always thought from the beginning was a bad guy because all the clues we found in the game that said he was a bad guy? And he turned out to be the bad guy? Just another effort. One more step and the work is over. I'll be the one who controls the virus. Virus? What? For our species' sake, for humanity, Sadako's curse will sweep all over the world, transforming it. So why not improve yourself with the virus? The virus promotes us, allows us beings to evolve further. If only I can use this power. Look, this is it, and I'm the only one who rules this force! <laughs> <laughs> Look, the virus is mutating him into Jay Leno. Wait, no, he's turning him into Pumpkinhead! This is it, folks. You are watching the ultimate battle for the fate of the world. In one corner, we've got a perverted woman so stupid she can't operate a flashlight against a creature so freakishly powerful and godlike it can't figure out how to circle around a utility shelf. Look at this fuck pop. <laughs> Tremble before me, Meg. Witness the ultimate power I wield. I, uh, I have evolved far beyond mortal comprehension. Your feeble human shelving unit cannot hope to withstand my ultimate power forever? <laughs> ow! Ow! Fuck, man! That's really starting to hurt you! Ow! Ah! Fuck! Damn you, Meg! Damn you and your shells! Well, I don't know about you guys, but that was everything I'd hoped it would be. So after that, whatever that was, you find Sadako's body in the lab next door. Which is perfectly preserved, by the way, frozen in a pod thingy. It's also wearing clothes, because corpses being autopsied for their magic viruses are often frozen in their casual wear. You know, neither one of these girls look anything like Sadako. I guess we're just supposed to take the game's word for it. Meg opens the pod and lets Sadako out. And if you know anything about anything, you can probably see that even for Meg, this ranks down there as one of the dumbest things she's ever done just under using Nair on her pubes. Sadako's understandably just a touch pissed off and floats off to the roof to do... things. Things made of anger, though. 
It's a good thing that even though Sadako can turn incorporeal and float through solid matter, her secret weakness is small caliber firearms. Um, yeah, this fight isn't much more dignified than the last one, is it? She just kind of bunny hops towards you and runs directly into your gun barrel. The best part is that she attacks by whipping her hair at you. Yeah, her primary attack is headbanging. Oh, come on! This doesn't warrant the squishy sound? Once you beat her first phase, she turns into birds and attacks that way. Because birds are another well-known element of the ring. Not you know, if this is the extent of Sadako's power turning into a few crows, I think the world can handle it. Once you knock her out, she stops being evil for a few minutes and gives you the vaccine for the virus, which makes everything better. Except you find out immediately afterwards that there's widespread rioting over the slow distribution of the drug and many more people are dying. So, thank goodness we've returned to the real world. It's so much nicer here than in Terror's Realm with its god-awful sunlight and plants and fresh air and working plumbing. I even had a job there and there was electricity and there wasn't being attacked by six-foot monkeys. Oh god, it was horrible! Terror's Realm my ass. Between the shitty voice acting, the boneheaded English localization, the fucking hilarious sound effects. Hell, even the complete lack of jump scares make this game impossible to take seriously, let alone be scared of it. Pick things out of my fucking ears scarier in this game. Spray taco dumps in the toilet bowl that made scarier sound effects than... You wanna see something scary? I'll review something fucking scary. Remember that review I did a long time ago based on John Carpenter's The Thing game? Yeah, well, what about that fucking insipid remix? <laughs> Where Steven Seagal fights vamp... Fucking pumpkin head movies are they gonna speaking of toilet bowl <laughs> That was scary, that's nothing compared shit. Final fan. When did they make a 13? Well, you just leave me nail here Hanging like Jesus on this cross I'm just dying for your sins And eating to the cons Well, don't worry. You'll be with Robert very soon. In 24 hours, you'll be totally overtaken by the test virus. Before you die, you may help me to prove that I've got Sadako's force under my control. You bastard! 